Hello, I just decided to start like one minute early because why not? I'm here just standing, waiting. Um, I'm also shooting this on camera here. So if I look over here, it's because I've also got a camera rolling so that I can post this afterwards in case I need to edit it or something. So uh, hello, hello, hello. Everyone's here. This is so exciting. What's up? Everyone's exploding with excitement. Jasmine is here. Marco, uh, some family members are in the house. Pat and Kevin are watching from uh, Ontario. And who else is here? Who is here? Hi, y'all. Thanks for watching. So this is crazy. So this is the piece. I, I took off my label, but this is the book. It's in here. I haven't opened it. Oh, my boyfriend's here. <laughs> uh, he's supposed to be working. Maybe he's finished working. Um, Italy's in the house. Aunt V from Italy. Aunt Downton is here. Hi, Aunt. Uh, this is uh, exciting. Remember when I did this? So I went back and checked to see. I did this when I um, got Vegan Comfort Classics. Um, in, it was actually earlier. It was like December 17th, I think, I, I opened Vegan Comfort Classics. And I was like, you know, it's just crazy to like see the printed book for the first time. Now it's like, okay, I've seen this a million times. Now we have a new one. And I got this on New Year's Eve. At night, I was like, this is the like craziest thing to receive at the end of 2020. What a way to ring in the new year. And it was like so hard to not open it. And I really just wanted to do it live for the first time because that's like real and a better reaction, right? Okay. Thor is here, who's been subscribed for so long. Feels like it was yesterday the first cookbook was released. It really does feel, I will say, like Vegan Comfort Classics sort of just came out. Um, I did a lot to promote it. I kind of did almost like two full years. Like I still, up until like the holidays, was still doing interviews talking about this book. So it's crazy. This book did really well because of y'all. Um, so thank you. So now there's like way too much pressure for this second one. It's like psyching me out. Okay. <sighs> so what should I, should I just open it? Oh my God. If you all want to pre-order the book, uh, let, let me just give you some info. If you want to pre-order the book, the link's in the description of this video. If you've already pre-ordered it, or if you pre-order it right up until the release date, which is March 16th, 2021, then you'll get a bonus gift. It's a free ebook. Um, it's called Just Dessert Stuff, and it's got 10 recipes in it that are um, not in this book. Uh, it's a separate ebook, bonus content, and you can claim that for free and get it right now to so kind of tide you over. Um, okay, so just so you know, so if you've ordered it from any retailer, you can do it. You can do it right up until March 15th at 11.59 p.m. The offer's still good. So make sure you go get that. Go to hotforfoodblog.com. Uh, did I link this in the description? I don't think I did. But go to hotforfoodblog.com and on the top bar, you'll see it's either on the Hot For Food All Day page or it's like a separate blog entry about just dessert stuff. You'll see the link. Okay, 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 okay. Ready, ready, ready? I feel like this is not as nerve wracking as the first time I did this. Cause like now I'm like seasoned and I've done it once before I can do it again. Oh, it's all nicely wrapped in everything. Oh, I should have been showing this cute uh, package that my editor made. You have to open the card first y'all. You can't just dive into the gift. <laughs> Let me read it privately first. Okay, yeah. Lauren, I wanted to end the year on a high note, and here it is. Hope you love it. I do. Thanks for working so hard. And with us, cheers, Kelly. That's my editor. It's uh, 10 Speed Press. Okay. Okay, you guys are nervous. No, I'm nervous. I'm nervous, but I feel like I'm, I forget how I felt the first time, but maybe I'm nervous. Uh, not as nervous. I don't know. Oh my God. So I've only seen PDFs, except I did see a cover proof. So I do know like the cover and what the color is supposed to look like and the um, finish and the gloss on the title. Do you see this? You can see the sheen. There's an, uh, a gloss just on the title. Ooh. Now this is called a French flap. It's the same as my first book. I think people really want um, hard covers, but this makes a more affordable book, which is our main goal for you guys. And 
truthfully, the way I make them do the spine is such that the book does stay open quite nicely on the counter. I feel like it's easier to like throw around because it doesn't have a hard cover. So anyway, you know, a lot of thought goes into that. Oh, okay, here's the front, here's the back. There's me in this kitchen standing right over here like this, this way. <laughs> um, someone, Amy said she prefers soft cover cookbooks. Yeah, good. I feel like some people was like, oh, I wish it was hardcover. But it's like, I think we just have this weird perception that a hardcover is like more prestigious. But I'd rather you pay under $20 or around $20 for a book. If it's a hardcover, it ends up being over $35. So I think that's the difference. Okay, so, so now what? Now what do we do? Oh, my God. Really what I'm looking at is like color, uh, color, uh, what do you call it? Color corrected and stuff, making sure the color looks good. Okay, where do we start? First of all, on the back here, we have an endorsement from Jillian Harris. She is um, Canadian, she's lovely. She's a big fan of uh, Hot For Food. She makes the food from Vegan Comfort Classics all the time. I was excited to you know, have her blurb. They call it an endorsement. Um, the dish on the cover, thank you. You guys need to prompt me. I'm like, I am nervous, so I don't even know what I'm saying and I'll forget what I said and didn't say. Uh, who's tearing up? Oh, I know, I, I can hold it together for all of us. Okay, so this is bolognese. This recipe is in fact on hopperfoodblog.com, but this is the perfected version. It's just a couple tweaks because to be honest, the bolognese, although many people make it, we threw it together very quickly when I released that. And so it wasn't truly perfect, I didn't think. So obviously I perfected it for this and took a way better photo than what's on the blog. Speaking of photography, um, I got help with this one from Eugenia. Eugenia is a colleague of mine from Canada and she came down to help me do all the photography. Uh, and I pr pretty much did the styling or like would get all the food ready. She would also help me cook and shop. And then she actually like set up the, you know, the, f the backdrop, the camera, the lighting. And because we did this in 10 days and I wanted to fire through as much as possible, which is not how I did it for Vegan Comfort Classics. I wanted to try to have some efficiencies. I really needed help and she was amazing to work with. And so all the photos you see in here, um, except for the ones with my face, uh, I had Eugenia's help with. And then my friend Vanessa Hines, who did the portraits from Being Comfort Classics, also did the portraits in this book, like this one. And she's amazing. Okay, wait a sec. Don't you think they look good together? Like, this was my plan all along. For them to kind of look companion-ish, Dark blue, light blue. This is what I envisioned all along, but I will say it took, I always envisioned this color, but it wasn't, we didn't look at this photo really initially at all, which is crazy. We were looking at other ones that I'll show you. Um, but this was the original vision that I had. And it's funny because I came to Los Angeles here to create this cookbook um, and what I think is hilarious and by no accident is my house is in fact this same color or along the same lines. It's got the blue door. It's got these blue, it's got the same color on the walls more or less. And when I saw this house, I knew this was where I had to make the cookbook because of the color of it. Um, and so it's funny just how things happen like that. Okay. So that's just a little inside um, info for you. I'll try to read as many comments as I can, but I also want to, show you guys what's going on. And I'm recording too, so I don't wanna, I gotta mind the camera. Okay, 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 okay. I won't get into the endorsements. Here's the first page. If you watch Hot For Food Approved, I alluded to the fact that this photo would be um, in the book. Me eating a piece of follow your heart, medium cheddar cheese. <laughs> Classic in the kitchen shop, real life. Okay, it's called Hot for Food All Day, Easy Recipes to Level Up Your Vegan Meals. And now I will read a paragraph. I'm just kidding, I won't do that. Here's the table of contents. No one can see it over here, okay. Um, what do you want me to show you? What I can't show you everything. Okay, wait a sec, what else? Oh yes, I also am wearing a similar color, which wasn't planned, but then when I saw it, I didn't know what shirt I was gonna wear today, and then when I saw it in the closet, I was like, I guess I got to wear that shirt. Okay. 
Someone said, show us your favorite recipe or photo. Okay, I don't know. It's hard to pick my fave, but let's let's just kind of start here at the beginning. You've got an introduction. You, I won't read any of that. There's a bit more preamble than the first book. I've got a list of everything in the book that is used. So it's divided by category, fruit, vegetable, dried spices, oils, vinegars. So I did give you a bit of a grocery list, sort of stockpile list. It's everything used in this book. And everything used in this book is pretty much all the same stuff I use in all my recipes. So there isn't, isn't anything like crazy. One second, I gotta restart my camera. Almost walked right off with my microphone falling on the ground. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Eugenia. Yeah, I don't I don't know if Eugenia's in here. Oh, Sally, my agent's on here. Hi, Sally. Which recipe are you most excited to see fans cook? That's a good question. Okay, I gotta show you more, but like, what is the recipe for that? Oh, I'm excited to see, I think these are gonna be your favorite recipes, but I'm also excited to see you make them and see the photos, but I have a one pot mac and cheese, okay? So this is like an easy mac and cheese. I know I've got that sort of creamy, more indulgent one in Vegan Comfort Classics. This is like craft dinner style or KD style. And then you level up the mac and cheese different ways five times. So there's pizza mac and cheese, there's buffalo chicken mac and cheese. There's Thai red curry mac and cheese. This is very pretty. And then there's a Tex-Mex mac and cheese. I'm trying to not show the recipes. <laughs> and there's one more, a green mac. Look at that. This is one of the photos I had to check for color. It's perfect. So I'm most excited about these because these are things I want to eat all the time. Uh, I feel like you guys are going to like all of this. Let's show you some more. Grilled cheese four ways. Dee -dee -dee -dee. <laughs> I feel like this book in terms of style and photography is like level one. Obviously I've grown, I have more time to plan. But that was my intention. So I hope y'all can sense that and, and feel the love in the book. Here is like a mid chapter break in the lunch stuff chapter called the bowl Bible, where, you know, I don't give you recipes for all these bowls, but you have pictures to use as inspiration, plus a bit of a guide on what makes the perfect bowl in my opinion. And then we go into the components. So the components are like cooked veg. And I give you those recipes. And then the hearty additions. So these are like your meat, right? The protein, the stuff that gives you the mouth feel, the like unk, the chewy parts. Okay. There are some recipes in here that, you know, are going to be sort of similar to what's on the blog, but there's still lots of new things. But one of the ones that I threw in here, which is similar to hemp crusted tofu, but without the hemp, is just like the crispy tofu fingers, because this is a staple. This is what everyone wants to make. They make it all the time off my blog. So it's a slightly tweaked panko uh, breadcrumb difference, but it's mostly the same. Um, let me show you new stuff. Okay, so everything's called stuff, like lunch stuff. I love these spreads. I wanted to do this in the first book, but I could not accomplish this alone, which is how I did my first book. So there's breakfast stuff, lunch stuff, dinner stuff, uh, sweet stuff, and staples, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Snacks, staples, and saucy stuff. What you'll think of this. Holly says I was excited anyway, but now I can hardly wait to start using the book. The other thing I want to mention is that this book has some sort of like epic comfort foods, but the intention was to make things more than not easier and also how to level up leftovers. So I'll give you an example of a leveling up of a leftover. Uh, here we go. So lunch stuff, for instance. Did I show you that? I showed you lunch stuff. 
Okay, I know. Oh, I meant it. You guys are like, I'll have watch later because the news. I know the news, and I meant to acknowledge this at the beginning. I know what's going on at the Capitol. It's effing ridiculous. I, it feels stupid to be doing this, to be honest, but I scheduled it, so I'm, I'm going forward, and I meant to say this off the top, but um, pay attention to what's going on um, right now with the politics and everything because it's absolutely crazy. And uh, I feel like the law and order is not being used uh, appropriately. Anyway, okay, uh, cause of racism, obviously, and white supremacy. Okay, anyway, I just want to acknowledge that I do know what's going on and I'm not ignorant and all of that. Okay, so tortilla soup, this is a perfected tortilla soup, like really perfected, like leveled up. Then you level it up into red sauce enchiladas. Then you can also level some of the soup into a cheese sauce. Now we blended this cheese sauce with prepared vegan cheese like the medium cheddar slices that you blend up. And it's an amazing cheese sauce. Very easy, something you could just make and store. It's a little spicy because it's got chipotle uh, peppers in it. Even like, this is just a simple kind of level up. I made a creamy green pea soup. So it's not like a sludgy brown pea soup. It's a green pea soup and it's super tasty and fresh and it's got lots of herbs in it. And then I just show like it's served with these Old Bay croutons. These are Old Bay croutons that are in the book. But I also show you a, like sort of like a second way to serve it if you want, which is with Parmesan and pasta with arugula on top. So it's kind of like a two-in-one recipe where it's like, maybe you just want it like this, maybe you want it like that. And the whole thing I'm trying to encourage, which is what I do on the channel, right? Which is like, you can follow what I say or you can just mix it up however you want. And that's really what I'm trying to sort of teach and encourage so that you can follow what I do maybe the first time and then you'll kind of get the hang of this leveling up idea and, uh, and then get, get to work experimenting with your own ways to level up the leftovers in this book. Another one that I love is the corn chowder gets turned into cacio e pepe. And this is one of my favorite photos in the book. So yes, I blended the soup into pasta sauce, which is nothing like cacio e pepe, but it is when you blend it and then you add vegan parmesan cheese and lots of pepper onto a spaghetti. And it's like, well, this will do. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me check these uh, questions here. I feel like I've been talking a lot really quickly. <laughs> Where are you guys? I love my old bay. Yes. Hungry siblings equal no leftovers. Correct. Well, that's the thing. You know, obviously some people don't have leftovers, but if you're cooking for one or two, which I think a lot of people who watch me do, and this is how I cook, I do have leftovers. And even if I have two servings or three servings, I don't want to eat the same thing over and over again, like I hate that so much. So that's why I like to level up leftovers into something totally new. How many recipes? There are over 120 recipes in this book. Um, just FYI. Okay, Molly said my New Year's resolution goal is to eat more delicious food. Well, then you should definitely be making stuff from hot for food because I only eat delicious food. <laughs> and if I don't eat delicious food, I get really angry. This recipe, easy Brussels sprouts pasta. So a lot of the easy recipes in here are inspired by things that I make in what I ate in a day. And if you watch my what I ate in a day videos, I'm just throwing something together. So oftentimes there's no real recipe. So I've taken some of those ideas and turned them into actual recipes for inspiration and for you to actually follow and make. Um, so that's one of these. And right now this recipe is actually on vegnews.com. So if you Google veg news, um, Brussels sprouts pasta, you'll get this recipe right now. So if you want to give it a try and share the photos. Um, what's another what I ate? Oh, this is another what I ate in a day. There's two pastas here back to back in the dinner stuff chapter. I actually really like this photo too. It's very what I ate in a day. <laughs> um, baking kale pasta. So in the book, we did take my, um, bacon marinade from book one, tweaked it slightly, and I did tempeh bacon chunks because I couldn't make a book and a collection of recipes without some type of bacony thing. So because I didn't actually put tempeh in the first book, it's here, but I've added a couple of extra ingredients to the marinade. So I love making that and then throwing it together with blistered cherry tomatoes, which I show you how to make in here, just some lacinato kale, black olives, 
this I've made in what I ate in a day so easy, but again, just wanted to make sure it was in a book like this because the two books are supposed to be companion pieces in a way like it's almost funny because it's like this is almost more the introductory book and this is the advanced book, but I did it backwards for you guys because I think the way you were introduced to me was like more this and I've become a little more like this due to the popularity of what I ate in a day and um, I think just my evolution over time and like knowing that you guys want to know these easy things that I make on an everyday basis and that's kind of where the title comes from like hot for food all day you can eat hot for food all day and I'm making it you know easier to do that you can't necessarily eat all day from this book you'd be in the kitchen all day <laughs> cooking and prepping this one's got more of those ideas ah <sighs> so thanks for everybody who's here, I'm not completely following these comments because there's lots to show you. Are most of the recipes quick? I would say it's like most of the recipes are quick and then there's still some stand, like they're look, easy tofu, veggie stir, is just where I basically show you the best way to pan fry tofu and get it crispy, which is again, something I do all the time but have really never showed it. Um, and of course this can be modified to be with rice or, but I do it with noodles. Um, what's another one? Korean barbecue burritos. These are soy curls with spicy Korean sauce on them, like beef. Those are easy. Also guys, not everything, but like there's I would say more than being comfort classics, gluten-free options and things intentionally made to be gluten-free. Obviously easy things like swapping a pasta for a gluten-free pasta you can do, but some of the desserts, um, in fact, one of my favorite desserts is gluten-free. Should we go to the dessert chapter? Oh, I'm excited about this classic onion dip. This is so simple, but was one is one of my favorite photos in the book. Just cause it like, Ugh, I just want to eat this dip all the time. It's super oniony. There's shallots in it and dehydrated minced onion. It's like next level chip dip. I guess I should have called it next level chip dip instead of classic onion dip. Oh, well, the things you think in, you know, after. Um, there is also, just for some inspo, these little breaks in the chapters that are like, what I eat when I'm you know, bringing stuff to a potluck or a dinner. So it's just like ideas of how to use these recipes in the book. Um, so that's like something I think that I added that I couldn't fit into the first book. And again, the theme with the what I ate in a day um, idea, right? Can a newbie vegan use this? Oh, 100% a newbie vegan can use this. I mean, newbie vegans even definitely use this book because I think this book my first cookbook um, is sort of for newbie vegans exciting because they, you know, what I've heard anyway and was my experience is when you first go vegan, you're sort of like, oh, I have to eat beans and salad all the time. Well, that's not what's in this book at all. And so I, I think this, this is really good for newbie vegans. And so is this. They're both, I think, achievable uh, and are very hot for food in terms of the style and the flavor profiles and stuff. Are the recipes more vegan processed products or blending veggies and such? It's a mix of both. I certainly use vegan cheese in the book, but it's often optional, not, not mandatory, except for something like a cheese sauce. Um, but still, still very, um, like even in Vegan Comfort Classics, you know, I'm showing you how to sort of transform vegetables. It's the same thing here, but yes, I would say I use maybe more vegan cheese in this book than I do in the first book for some recipes. But here's one of my favorite recipes. I show you how to make your own smoky cheese spread. So this ish is like cheese whiz, but like for the sophisticated person who follows hot for food. Uh, so it's like homemade sophisticated cheese whiz from scratch, no processed cheese. Then I think this is exciting. We level that up or you can use it as a dip on crackers, but we level it up into this delectable, can't show the recipes y'all, this delectable cheese tart with rosemary shortbread crust and then a nut and seed topping. It's basically like a savory type of granola bar or like tart. I think it's really fun and it uses that uh, smoky cheese spread. Does anyone know if you pre-order the printed book, do you get the ebook? 
Uh, if you pre-order this book right now, you'll get just dessert stuff for free. You go claim it on hotforfoodblog.com. Whether you've pre-ordered it previously or you want to do so now or you want to do so in a month. Um, if you're referring to the Kindle version of this, you can order the Kindle version of this and still claim the ebook, Just Dessert Stuff, on my blog. You just need your order number, your receipt from your order from any retailer, and that's how you claim it. I'm excited about this. Hot for food snack mixes. We all know how much I love, love popcorn. So I've got five different seasonings of popcorn, including a beet pink caramel popcorn. And then we mix things into it. Now the mix-ins are of course things you buy at the store. You don't make them from scratch. You just make your popcorn from scratch. Um, but I thought it was fun because it's like having your own custom sort of like party mix. A lot of what I'm showing are my favorite recipes, I think. Let me show you one more fave. I'm so good about this. Now this is a bit more of a complex recipe. As you can see, it takes up two pages. Sweet and sour rice balls. <gasps> this is like Italian, this is like Italian arancini mixed with Chinese food, which sounds perhaps bizarre, but it's extremely good. It is like an arancini then with a crust, a panko crust, and then sweet and sour sauce coated on the outside. Uh, I'm a big fan of this recipe. This would be one of the more complex, yet very rewarding recipes. <laughs> Let's just make sure my sound is still recording. Yes, okay. I hope Costco sells this new book. They should, they sell Vegan Comfort Classics. Um, so, you know, check when I, that, I don't think you can pre-order from Costco, but it'll be in the store. Um, thank you for all the congratulations. Someone said, show your least favorite recipe. I don't think, well, how do I pick a least favorite? What's my least favorite? I don't think that's fair. It's like I'm shit talking my own cookbook. My least favorite. I don't think I can answer that question. I'm just looking. Maybe it's, no, I can't pick. That would be weird. <laughs> okay, maybe it's like the stir fry, even though I bet you the stir fry is going to be the most popular recipe because I basically show you how to use one of the sauces in the book that can be used multiple ways, but we, up, we level it up into a stir fry sauce very quickly and easily. So I feel like Although it's my least favorite because a stir fry is like, whatever, everyone can make a stir fry. I mean, some people can't. So hopefully those people will follow the recipe in here. Um, so th there are some things in here that, you know, this is what I had to sort of think about is like, they may be basic and very easy to me, but they might be um, people who bought the, buy the book or new people who buy the book too, who maybe don't know me. These are not necessarily things that y'all think about. So I have to, I'm, I have so much experience that sometimes I forget that the easy thing I make actually might be something someone wants to also make or copy. And I kind of forget that. So that's try, that's sort of what I try to put into this book um, for the most part. All right, let's get to the dessert, someone said. Aunt V, let's get to dessert. Okay. I was just thinking I was most excited about the stir fry. See, that's the thing. And it's like, I feel like even over the last couple of years, I really tried to sort of survey and observe what y'all were talking about online and asking for. And I realized often I would try to make this like crazy epic thing, you know, and sometimes you're just like, I need to know how to make a stir fry sauce, or I need to know how to make a really good quick pasta. So I plan on sort of, I've, I've kind of gotten into doing that more on the channel and I, and I definitely plan on doing that as an extension of the launch of this book. And that's what's in this book. Okay, desserts, desserts, desserts. Also, there's a whole, that Staples sauces and snack chapter has all kinds of sauces. Um, here's those Old Bay croutons. Ooh. Okay, desserts. <sighs> Are there any Southern style dishes? Um, what like not per se well corn chowder is that southern I don't know see I feel like the way I cook is a is kind of southern but fused with other things I, I feel like I don't do one particular pillar or type of cooking because comfort food encompasses so many cuisines and cultures 
So I try to kind of like mix and match. I'm a big mixer and matcher. I believe in mixing and matching. Um, you know, we could get into a whole conversation about authenticity, but sometimes I do think that the best food comes from sort of smashing two things together. <laughs> I'm all about smashing two things together here at Hot For Food. Okay. Sweet stuff. So exciting. Um, where do we start with the sweet stuff? Well, I'm super stoked on these Rocky Road bars, which takes the granola recipe from the breakfast chapter and levels it up into a dessert. I thought that was pretty clever. <laughs> Uh, easy one. That's an easy one. Even the granola is easy. You just make it all in one tray. No dishes. Remember recipe, which I couldn't, I actually talk about recipe in the front matter, what's called the front matter. And then I kind of talk about how I changed that to level up because writing recipe in a book to someone who doesn't know what I'm talking about is weird. But remember my corn cookie recipe video? I perfected it. And they're amazing. In fact, I really love this recipe. So it's a choc it's a chocolate chip corn cookie that turned out really, really good. Yes, there's corn and lime zest and chocolate in that cookie recipe. And it's so good. Wait, I don't even want to show you this one because, okay, I'm going to show you. You're getting a huge sneak peek right now. Snickle doodles, Snickles in here. He made them. No, he didn't make them. <laughs> but I wasn't going to put, I had snickerdoodles on my list. And then one day, I don't know what, I was like, doy Snickle doodles. Because I needed to get a Snickles photo in the book. There's actually a couple Snickles photos but I needed him with the food like last time. He's with the apple pie. So here he is with the snickle doodles. Yeah, that's a good one. They're, they're actually quite good. Um, okay, this recipe is also on veggenews.com right there. They're giving you a really good sneak peek. This is gluten-free coconut pecan biscotti. It's better gluten-free, I actually have to say. I made it over Christmas not gluten-free just to see. Gluten-free is better. It has a better rise. It has a better texture. I don't know why. I have no clue, but I made it gluten-free to start with, and it is. Okay. I, Lana said I can't hear the word recipe without hearing me say recipe <laughs> to the point it's how I say it around my house. I know. It's like I wanted it to catch on, which it did amongst us, amongst the inside people, but I feel like you know, when you think about making a book, you really do have to think about targeting a new audience and perhaps, you know, just people picking this up off the shelf, not knowing who I am. And it, I couldn't make it too, like, inside -y. But I do address it in the beginning so, because, really, this book is for y'all first, not the people who don't know me. But, um, yeah, okay, donut holes. These aren't gluten-free, sorry. These are uh, gluten-full. But, you know, again, I don't always test this. But um, I'm pretty sure, like, in some cases like this, you could probably use a gluten-free one-to-one. Um, then I do loaf cakes three ways. Oh, yeah, good. You're putting, yes, Mississippi Vegan is, of course, Southern cooking, like, true Southern cooking. You should definitely get his book if you're wondering about Southern cooking. My pumpkin spice loaf cake, loaf cakes three ways. <gasps> You may have seen this on an episode of The Vegan View. I uh, brought this exact loaf, this exact one, to the girls. Um, they got to eat the leftovers. Okay. Um, let's just show one more thing, okay? Because I've shown you a lot, which is good. But I've got to save some for secrets. Okay. Um... Oof, I'm looking at some color here. It's, well, it's fine. I'm really picky about the color on photos, but. Now, what do you all think about this? This is a divisive recipe amongst my friends. No churn salted tahini caramel ice cream. I mean, salted caramel tahini ice cream. No churn. Tahini ice cream to me is like real good. Tahini is amazing and should be in everything, including ice cream, which is why I did this. 
Um, but I feel like it's divisive. Like some people will love it and some people might be like, mm, I'll leave the tahini to my hummus. <laughs> but I really like it. I think it's good. Yes, tahini is the new peanut butter. Tahini is the new everything. So we also level up the um, tahini ice cream to something else that I'll leave to be a secret for the moment. So how many pages? Not including the index. 236 pages. How much was my other book? I think we did a bigger book this time. Oh, we did one more, what's called Signature. This one was 229 pages, not including the index. Okay, so this was super fun. Thanks for being here to watch the reveal of Hot For Food all day. I can't believe I'm actually holding it. The cover looks immaculate. We really nailed the color and the, the photo here, I have to say. I'm quite impressed uh, with the cover. And the cover, like I said, we didn't look at this photo. We were looking at, oh, we looked at the Brussels sprouts pasta for the cover. We looked at, nothing was really working. It didn't make sense. We looked at the buffalo mac and cheese for the cover, but it was like, I, I had this thing about wanting the food to look eaten, but then after much, much debate, uh, we realized this does not look appetizing as a book cover. I don't think. We weren't sure. We were like, it could look like, eh, this isn't good. I stopped eating it. <laughs> These are all the things we had to think about. But I think we really landed on the right one here. Especially with like, the, you know, this wasn't even much effort to get this like noodle paperdell wrap. It looks like it's very highly styled, but I don't overly style my stuff because I don't have the patience for that. So we, we didn't over style. You know, I had help with from Eugenia and it definitely made a difference. Um, you know, I definitely did some spritzing of water on the food, which is not a trick I knew to do over here. So, you know, had a water spritzer to make the stuff look shiny and fresh and juicy. Little tip for you, hot tip. There's also hot tips in here. Hot tips didn't go away. The hot tips are in this book. Okay, y'all are the best. Um, let me answer some more questions. Yes, there'll be a virtual book. Well, I shouldn't say there'll be a virtual book tour because I don't know. But there will be, um, oh yeah, that's what I meant to say. If you pre-order the book and you sign up and you get your free gift for just dessert stuff, you end up on a mailing list. And that mailing list will all be invited. Anyone who pre-orders this book will be invited to the digital events on launch day. Might be launch day or the day after launch day, but we're going to do two events to accommodate time zones. And they're going to be online events that I host with some special guests and some fun stuff, prizes, all this thing. We're going to try and make it really fun, even though we have to be virtual. So that's another reason why you need to pre-order the book so that you can come to the big online launch party with everybody, all the hot for foodies with me, with some of my friends. Uh, so yes, that's another perk of pre-ordering the book link below. Um, and what was the other thing? Oh, so then in terms of a book tour, yeah, we won't be doing any physical things, but uh, bookstores may host their own events with me in which you would go sign up through them or buy a ticket. Like there'll be a bunch of other events as well, not just the launch events that I'm putting on myself. So just stay tuned. I'll announce everything. But the main thing is the launch event. Like if you want to, if you're hardcore, you got to be part of the launch event, which is like put on and organized by me and my team. So that's why you have to pre-order because to pre-order means you claim just dessert stuff and then I have your email, then you'll get an invite to the launch event. If you don't do that, you won't get an invite. And it will be free, obviously. Okay, I think that's all. What are you saying? Probably I feel I need to order another two for each of my girls, yes. The measurements, oh guys, it's the same as last time. Just the tablespoons, the cups. There's weights and stuff for some things, like pasta. But, yeah. What do you call that? Metric? Imperial? I'm so dumb. We were going to do weights, but my publisher actually just said, this is how we do it, so we don't need to do that. <laughs> Wasn't up to me. Okay. Um, it's also cheaper when you pre-order. Is that true? Well, actually, I think it is actually discounted right now on Amazon. Um, but you can also order from a local bookshop or a black-owned bookshop or any bookshop you want. So buy local if you can. Um, and you just keep your eye out for sales with some of the bigger book retailers because they have that. I'm just drinking kombucha. 
Okay, y'all, metric is what? Cups and tablespoons? I should know that, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> um, mainly because I'm Canadian and I'm also American, but I've always just kind of done the American measurements because that's how most recipes on the internet are written. So that's how I learned how to cook. So. Are there gluten-free recipes in it? Yeah. Definitely more gluten-free than Vegan Comfort Classics. Um, like a lot of the staples, all the staples, the sauces, the hearty additions from the Bowl Bible, everything's gluten-free there. Uh, a lot of stuff can be altered to be gluten-free, like gluten-free panko, gluten-free pasta. Um, some of the desserts are gluten-free, but, but most of the desserts are not gluten-free because it's not my favorite way to bake. But my favorite dessert recipe is the biscotti recipe that I nailed, and it's gluten-free. The Rocky Road bars are gluten-free. Um, so there's a few. There's more than the first book. I feel like the main feed... Uh-oh, my thing stopped recording. Ah, one sec, guys. Anyway, I think I have enough on that video. The main... Uh, what was I going to say? The main feedback I feel like I get from people is that they are able to modify the things that aren't uh, gluten-free to gluten-free, most often with my recipes. Sometimes with the exception of baking, I don't test gluten-free options. Like, so that's not written here. Uh, so sometimes you are taking a chance. But in most cases, I've gotten feedback that the one-to-one gluten-free flour works for things like cookies. Uh, it's a little bit different for things like cakes and anything with yeast. But uh, yeah, anyway, just to give you a bit of uh, context there. Okay, I think I'm going to bounce now, but I really appreciate you watching and pre-ordering and being so excited about the book. Remember, I'm talking to two cameras here. Um, I'm excited. Also, I already thought of my third book. <laughs> I Where did I reveal that? I revealed that somewhere on my IG Live that I did a week ago. So... That's all I'll say is I already thought about what I want to do. So no, I'm not going to be taking a break from making cookbooks as far as I can tell, because I really like making cookbooks. I really like creating what Timmy from Mississippi vegan calls a body of work. Um, you know, putting out weekly content or whatever on YouTube or in video form is sort of its own thing. It's not the same, doesn't have the same feel as having a collection of work. And um, yeah, there's just something, this is a lot of work. There's something rewarding about doing that though. And, you know, as long as people are still buying books, I don't see why I wouldn't make them. I'm on fire, yes. You can't stop the the brain. I can't stop the brain. <laughs> it is exhausting, Molly. It's it is. But there's something sadistic about someone who's creative who like almost likes going that way. You like the putting all of your creativity into something, and it's kind of weird. Um, and I I didn't realize that on such a level until I did this book, and then it sort of I it kicked in, and I and I didn't think I'd want to do another one, and then all of a sudden I just was like. I want to almost need to beyond my control, do another one. So um, that's what already has happened where I've already thought of like what I want to do for a third one. So it's crazy. Uh, I'm in the U S right now uh, for y'all wondering. Okay. So I appreciate you being so excited. One more, one more question. I saw there was a question. Oh, what happened to the frozen foods? Um, so th this whole thing is proving to be a little bit difficult. Uh, it, I'm trying to get a licensing deal more or less is what it's called. So it's like, I don't put up the upfront cost to manufacture my own hot for food brand of let's say frozen onion rings or cheese sauce. I want to work with an existing company who can then manufacture it. And I would be involved in the testing and the, the R and D and everything. And then we would make a hot for food licensed product under that brand. Like that brand could be Gardein or that brand could be ConAgra foods. It could be big or small, but someone would basically we'd work out a licensing deal. And so that's what I'm trying to work on. It's a bit insidey business stuff. Uh, it's very passive where I have a team helping me work on it. I don't on the day to day really have many conversations about it, but I get pitched all the time. Um, but it seems to be not really planning. It, it seems logical to me, but it doesn't really, I guess, seem logical to other people <laughs> uh, to do this. But uh, soon, hopefully. 
My goal is to have the cheese sauce available for you to purchase. That's my goal. That's like my only goal. Anything we make after that is just icing on the cake. Okay. You know Lauren has high standards for frozen foods. Exactly. You think the hardest part will be of that whole project, making sure the product is good because I will not put out something that I think is compromised. Like I just won't do that, but why bother? Um, okay, love you all. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Pre-order the book. Uh, there'll obviously be more stuff going on in the next coming months, but March 16th, 2021, it'll arrive on your doorstep. Oh, Hansie's here. Hi, Hansie. <laughs> I recognize so many Hot Fur Foodies in the chat. Also, Sam from Hemp Vegan Love is here. I have like some testers in here, Jasmine and Hemp Vegan Love. Say hello to them. They were my, they're my all-star testers. Um, okay, love you. I thought Snickles would be around that I could grab him, but he's sleeping. So I don't want to disturb him, right? Okay. I feel like I could stay on longer, but you know, it's been 45 minutes. I think that's, that's good. Okay. There'll be like a pared down uh, taped version of this on the channel too, for other people who missed this. Um, I'm going to log off now. Thank you.